Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Bible study. Tonight we're going to be studying on marriage. Amen. My wife and I just celebrated our 47th year, and I said, well, the Lord has brought us a long way, and I've learned a lot in that process. Uh, so I thought we would do a course on marriage. And uh, through the years, my wife and I, we've sat in a lot of classes on marriages even. And uh, one thing I found out that uh, every marriage is not exactly the same. Uh, so when anybody is teaching on marriage, you have to kind of pray about it and see if that fits your situation. If it's not grounded and rooted uh, in the word of God. Now, if it's specifically grounded and rooted in the word of God, uh, then it should fit every marriage. Uh, but it have to be tailored sometimes to the couple. Uh, so uh, when my wife and I got married, we was very young. Uh, but as the scripture said, when I was a child, I spake as a child <laughs> and I understood as a child. Uh, but when I became older, I put away childish things. Uh, just a few days ago, I saw a piece I think my niece had post, reposted, and it had to do with love, and it says that give me love and not money, but actually you need both. <laughs> love is not going to pay the bills, it's not going to keep you uh, in clothes or food. Uh, I, I know what they are trying to say, but see the Bible tells us to, to work that we may have it to give, and so I was not really taught investing. Um, when I was young, I thought, hey, just get another job. <laughs> and so it wasn't in my mindset that if you save a little through the years, um, before you know it, uh, the money will be working for you rather than you working for the money. Um, but when you're making mistakes, God always give us time. He used to give us time to um, straighten what um, we got crooked. And so um, the Bible lets us know that uh, marriage was instituted by God. If you go back in the book of Genesis, uh, when um, the Lord took uh, from the side of Adam and made woman, he brought her to the man. And he was excited about his wife. And he says, bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. And so he became very excited about his wife. And when we get married, we make commitments and we make promises. And a lot of times, uh, people don't keep their commitment and they don't keep the promise they made. Even they stand before God and says, better for worse. I don't think they really think about what worse can entail. Uh, and so then, Secretly, we got a line we don't want to uh, bear or don't want to cross. So uh, in this lesson, I just want to bring out some things that I felt uh, helped me in my marriage. Uh, one thing I realized in our, our marriage is starting out is I forget my wife is not me. <laughs> she don't think like me. She don't behave like me. Most women don't. Most women don't uh, think like men think. And men don't think like women think. And so it takes us some time sometimes to kind of sell in and um, begin to live with them. The Bible says according to, wit, to, to knowledge. Uh, sometimes it takes some time to get some knowledge. It takes some experience. And so um, just reflecting back um, over being in the church, I remember there were some couples that uh, did pieces on marriage, and guess what? The marriage fell apart. Uh, they didn't stay married. And he went on, got another woman, or she went and got another man. And um, it, even in society, uh, only about 50% of marriages make it. And then when you focus on the church, guess how, what percentage of the church? About the same, about 50%, not much better. 
And so um, the Bible let us know that um, God instituted marriage. And when you're talking about the relationship between us and God, uh, he bring up marriage. And so there's a correlation between it. Uh, but what we have to realize, just because you say, uh, don't mean that um, your marriage is just going to fall into place. It, it still takes work. I remember, um, well, it was sometime after I got saved, but I remember a brother coming up to me, and he had an unsaved wife. And he said, man, I wish I had a saved wife. I said, look, don't get me wrong. It's great to have a saved wife. It's great for you to be saved. It's great to have a saved wife. But I said, don't think that your problems go away just because your partner's saved. Uh, you still have to uh, work on it. Uh, because uh, even if you save, you're still going to throw your clothes on the floor or leave the cabinet door open. You're going to do something <laughs> to irritate your partner. And so being saved don't mean that uh, you're not going to have some things to work out or some, some kind of issues. And, and so um, the Bible uh, really tells us, it really tells us in um, 1 Peter 3, 1 and 2, it says, Likewise, your wives be in subject to your own husband, that if any obey, obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wife, which they behold your chastened conversation coupled with fear. It's not talking about, when it says conversation, uh, a lot of times when we think of conversation, we think of what? We think of your mouth, don't we? <laughs> we think of your, your uh, words. We don't think of your action. But actually, the Bible is talking about uh, your action. In other words, live it. And if you live it, then you will uh, do better than uh, with your mouth. And so uh, that's what it's talking about. It says, uh, if a... Uh, uh, if God desires for a Christian woman to live with an unsaved husband as long as he's willing to faithfully fulfill his responsibilities. In other words, don't leave him. As uh, long as he is uh, willing to hang in there and, and uh, fulfill his responsibility. Now, it don't, it's directing this at a woman, but I'm sure there's uh, a man the same thing. He has to also... Re uh, uh, fulfill his responsibility uh, when it's come to his wife. And so we can live a victorious Christian life. Um, but when we make mistakes, uh, then we have a chance, hopefully, to, to get, get them correctly. Um, and so even if um, that relationship never comes to the place where both are saved, uh, you can still uh, live a harmonious and uh, love-filled relationship, okay? And, and so the thing is, is to put the principle into action. And so um, an unbeliever, it says when they marry, uh, the Bible tell, gave us instruction to marry in the Lord. And so uh, when it comes to being um, unequally yoked, it is not just uh, saved and unsaved. There's many ways you can be unequally yoked. Um, I just can't see myself married to like a professor or a doctor, and I worked in construction. Or I can't see somebody that uh, is really into that career. You know, some uh, women even is so far in that career, they don't want to have children, they want to focus on that career. I just can't picture that myself. And so it's what you want out of a marriage. Um, I remember an individual telling me, well, I like, um, it was a sister telling me, well, I like tall men. I said, well, get you a tall man. They weren't married yet. I said, well, get you a tall man. <laughs> and so you can, live a, you can uh, love a, a short man, tall man. Um, her, one uh, sister says that you could just marry a, a rich man as easy as you can a poor one. Well, if you can, go for it. <laughs> but however you see yourself, whatever you see yourself with, 
then uh, why you sell for anything less? And so um, when it comes to uh, marriage, uh, you can't just blame family problems on uh, being because you're not saved. That, that makes no sense. And they say, well, if you get saved, we'll be all right. No, you still got to work. You still have to work in marriage. It reminds me of uh, uh, Elder Johnny James about his car when he want, needed a mechanic. Okay? He wasn't looking for a good Christian. He was looking for a good mechanic. It's the same with a marriage. Uh, whether you saved or unsaved, you're still going to have to apply those principles um, to uh, be a loving marriage and to have respect for one another and grow with one another. My wife and I, we actually grew up together because we had about the same amount of knowledge <laughs> when, it, when it came to marriage. All we know, we wanted to be married. And then after we got married and then the problems come and you have to try to fit that thing together. And as you grow, and I, I have to give God credit though because, uh, and she, she have said that herself, uh, if it had not been for him, we may not have been together. But if we had the sense that we needed, <laughs> uh, then we would have been together either way. But God makes it a lot easier, okay? So he, cause he can, the Holy Ghost can bring you to the place that you ordinarily wouldn't have not been. And so I thank him for that. And so, uh, don't ever make, uh, I'm going to speak for a man now since I'm a man. I can't just speak all the things for a woman because, see, the Bible even tells the women to teach their women how to love their husband. I, I can't teach that, uh, but I can teach about men. Uh, men don't like to be belittled. <laughs> and, and so if you, you belittling your man, and uh, that's not a good thing. Uh, but uh, I have to say, my wife never did that to me, and she always uh, uh, supportive and made me feel like I could do about anything. And I've said that many times. If you got a woman that, if, even if, if you can't do it and she think you can do it, <laughs> she'll have you feel like you can do it. And, and, and so, but if you had one that you can't, uh, then you're in trouble. And, and so if you, if you think about Samson, uh, Samson married Delilah. And I don't think she really loved him. And, and the reason I said that is because uh, she was more concerned about her people. And so um, his parents tried to talk to him and said, Man, can't you find an Israelite to marry? But he was determined that he could, to, could marry her and that he could... Uh, uh, Held the world and spiritual at the same time. And he felt like he could shake himself. He could play with her. And, and he found out that he, he couldn't. And, and same with Solomon. Solomon had unsaved women. And uh, the Bible said he did pretty good until he got old. See, God don't tell you when it's going to happen. He just tell you, hey, I'll leave them women alone. Uh, but when he got older, they turned his heart. Okay, and so um, that is something that we have to uh, be mindful of. Oh, yeah, yes, you know, uh, show him that you're proud of him um, so that he feel like that he's able to do it. And, and, and so and another thing is um, uh, that there's uh, some women that like the bad boys, you know, they don't like good, <laughs> the good men, you know, they like the, the, the rough ones. And, and so everybody got their idea about it. I was asking my wife, wasn't that long ago, I was asking her, do you, you like a man that take charge or do you like a man to ask you everything? Because one day we was uh, coming down 11th Street and she says, I think I want something to eat. So I turn on 18th. She said, where are we going? And I said, no matter where we going. <laughs> and so, so I went to the restaurant, you know, and I made the decision. But sometimes I ask her, what do you want to eat? But not always. 
because uh, always she, she uh, feel like, hey, you take charge sometime. And so uh, she'll let me know if, hey, I don't like this play or what have you. And so um, show him loyalty, you know, brag on him a little bit. Get, get that chest sticking, sticking out there. <laughs> Glory to God. And so um, he's the husband either way, whether he's saved or unsaved. He's still um, the husband. And so um, marriages is, as I said earlier, it was God's design. You remember when they came to Jesus and they were asking him, well, why did Moses grant divorces? You remember what Jesus' reply was? It's because of the heart of your heart. And so God allowed it because it would be uh, worse if you didn't allow it. And people have it hard, hard, and you put two people together, they'll find some way. You know, even today with divorce, uh, you know the first person they look at is one of you come up missing? Yeah, if I come up missing, they'd be looking at Kathy Fur. If she come up missing, they'd be looking at me. Why is that? Now, now, I don't understand that because now you have people getting divorced. You can just get a divorce. But, hey, they don't want to split. They don't want to split the house. They don't want to split the money. Or they just may feel embarrassed and feel like I'd rather just get rid of you and nobody know what happened to you. But that is why that um, we live in that kind of society, is they, they look at the spouse or they look at the boyfriend first, is because usually that's what happens. And so uh, Jesus let them know, but that wasn't how it was supposed to be. And so commitment, that was the first thing I brought up was commitment. Commitment is a big part of marriage. Um, and it's good if you can commit your family to the Lord. And so many marriages, that's how they, they uh, start. They start with a vow and they uh, are under the authority of God. But then I fail to follow the promises of that vow. And so uh, that's why a lot of them fail is that um, all of a sudden you fall out of love or you're incompatible you don't say all of that when you get married. Do you hear anything about being incompatible? I don't even think they ask you, do you really love them? But commitment, you have to be committed. That even go for being saved. You have to be committed. That means you're going to be stick, have some stick to it. It'll be like... Uh, um, uh, Joshua, choose you this day who you will serve. But he said, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's a commitment. But only by having him as the head of the husband and wife will it prosper to the place that the Bible is talking about. Okay. And so uh, the number two is to grow. Ideally, to grow in Christ. Now, it, not every Christian has decided to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm sure you have run into uh, saints that seem like they're not making any uh, headway in that department. Been saved for a long time, but they still complaining, they still griping. Uh, every time you see them, Something is wrong. Now, you're going to have some ups and downs in life. Uh, but every time, you can't talk to them on the phone without them bringing you down. You, you have to go and get charged yourself after talking to them. And, and so, uh, sometimes, uh, iron sharpens iron. Understand that. Iron sharpens iron. You're not going to always be on the mountaintop. But you should always be down. You shouldn't always be depressed, okay? And so um, 
that is another part of marriage. God is working in marriage to fulfill his own desires as well as all married Christians. He is seeking godly offspring. That is uh, Malachi 2, 15. For our homes and therefore he requires faithfulness in marriages. One thing you have to be sure to ask in a marriage or before you get married, do you want children? Do you want have a children or do you want a puppy? <laughs> and nothing wrong with it, but you got to be in agreement. Okay, so that's some things that, to, to ask for. That, that was one, um, what was that minister name that had that list of things to ask? That crap low dollar. Now, he may not have the truth, but he had it down pat. <laughs> Do you live with mama then? <laughs> Do you have your own place? <laughs> What's your credit score like? <laughs> he went down the line. Is that your real face? Or do you wear makeup? If you don't wear makeup, if you wear makeup, I need to see you without makeup. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, don't never say, you know, I never seen them mad. No, you need to see them mad. Do you throw things? Do you hit? <laughs> and, and so he, he got a good one. He, he did it good. And so there was something to that. Because usually, when you're uh, dating anyway, you put forth your best. You don't put forth your worst. You put forth your best. You try to anyway. But every once in a while, you know, that adversary comes out there to pick people's head out. And so, hey, if there are some warning signs, uh, then you know not to go that way. Okay. And so... Um, to be faithful. Commitment means to be faithful both in mind and in action. As Job said, I have made a covenant with my eyes. In other words, I'm not going to be looking at other women. I don't care how she built or how good she looked. I've made a covenant with my eyes. I'm not going that way. And so it's not just your action, but also your mind. Don't allow your mind. Uh, one of the biggest, you know what one of the biggest industries in the United States is? Pornography. It was one of the biggest industries in the United States. And that's not good for a marriage. And so if you only have eyes for your spouse, and you won't have to worry about that, do you? Your spouse is the only one you allow to think that way about. And so God created woman to complement man. And that means that man is lacking in areas. So if he made my wife to compliment me, to be my heifer, that means I'm lacking in some areas. We kind of have to watch how world look at things. World get messed up with stuff. Men and women are the same. No. No. God didn't make us the same. Now, I'm for, I'm for uh, uh, equal pay. I'm for equal rights. But my wife and I are physically different. Caitlin can't play NBA ball. I don't care what they say. <laughs> they can get mad at me if you want to. Oh, she's the best ever man and women. No, she's the best women. <laughs> yes, currently. Did you put out there? Are you kidding me? And I wish her the best. Don't mean I'm hating, but sometimes you had to call things like they are. Okay, uh, they all of them probably got more money than I got. So, 
<laughs> but I still wish them the best. Uh, but let's put it in perspective, okay? So, so uh, even that tennis player, what's her name? At least she got, she admitted, says the top 200, she said, I wouldn't play no man. She said, they stronger, they faster. So you can say I'm the best women, but you can't say I'm the best tennis player. And so, um, it don't mean because the Bible said a man is the head that she's just there to take orders. Because a lot of women, you know, when they get married, they'll say, I don't want to say that, obey. I don't want to say that part. <laughs> because you're thinking is, I know tell what he might ask me to do. <laughs> but see, the Lord ain't expecting you to obey something that's not right. And so a lot of times they don't understand that. And they feel like I can't say obey because he might ask me something crazy to do. Um, look at, um, um, what her name, you remember when she went out to feed David behind her, 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 her husband's back? Her husband, he didn't want to, um, uh, Abigail. Abigail took control. She wasn't out of place. She did that to save her family. Her husband was a fool. They said that's what his name mean. You remember David had took care of his flock, had prevented loss, and all David wanted was enough food to feed his. That was a culture. That's what he was supposed to do. He was supposed to, because he would have lost a lot more. All David want, hey, give us some for my men so they can eat. And so he denied David. And David got upset and says, hey, I tell you what, when we get done, there's not going to be a man left. And so what she did was got the servant and went and got some figs and all kinds of stuff, and she went and met David. And she cooled off David. She didn't only save her husband, she saved David. She said, hey, look, you're going to be king. You can't be a... a see, sometimes your wife got to cool you off. You remember the slap, right? The famous slap? <laughs> you can't be over there doing that look. And he going to think, mm, okay. <laughs> you want me to do something about this? Uh, um, uh, Y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> Will Smith. Yeah, her, her, his wife over there making them faces. And so he felt like, hey, I'm the man. I need to do something about this. Well, she ought to have been telling them, sit yourself down. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, because Abigail, look what happened. David married Abigail. After her husband died, he took her as a wife because he knew she was the type of woman, instead of getting you in trouble, she can keep you out of trouble. No, there's nothing wrong with your wife catching your coattail and Come on, don't do that. Instead of egging you on into some trouble. Okay, so it don't mean that she just take orders. Matter of fact, she might be getting her message from God. And, and you, he, she just relaying. <laughs> Maybe you're in a spot you're not hearing. And I have to realize what my wife is better at than I am. And it makes no sense. Like if I, if I want some information on banking, then I know that she knows about banking. That's not all she knows, but I'm just giving an example. And so I'll be crazy to act like I know everything about banking. And she works at a bank. Or maybe she's better at financing or whatever. I'm just giving an example.
So she's not commanded to obey him blindly. Even when it came to Paul, what Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. He did not ask anybody to follow him blindly. Follow me as I follow Christ. And so she have to be able to deliver rebuke, reproof, and exhortation in according with the leading of the Holy Ghost. And guess what? The Bible says submit yourself to one another. It's not one-sided. One individual says, I may be the head, but she's the neck. <laughs> because if things not going good, what the Bible say? Best be on the rooftop. <laughs> so if she's not happy, you're not going to be too happy. And so, so that's a given. <laughs> and, and, and so that's what I, um, when he was talking about the money, I said, you know, money can affect the relationship. The Bible says love of money, but money is necessary. I said, you can be miserable. If he's not working and you don't have any, it can cause a miserable relationship. My wife and I have been through that. But I thank the Lord that we um, learned some sense. <laughs> uh, because when it comes to and, and taxes is pretty close up on us. When it comes to taxes, you know the wealthy got all kind of loopholes. And so the only thing you can find is the one for the middle, uh, um, middle class. And so they got IRAs. That means if you put so much in an IRA, you don't have to pay taxes on it. Depending on how you want to do it. If you do a Roth, you pay taxes but you don't have to pay taxes on what you make. So that means you pay taxes on 10,000. If it grows to 40, uh, if it grows to 50,000, then you don't have to pay the taxes on the 40,000 that it made. Or you can take tax uh, deduction now, a regular IRA. And so that means you can put, uh, is it still 7,500? You put 7500 in there, you don't have to pay taxes on it. And so actually, uh, that 7500 by not having to pay taxes on it, that's just like you only putting uh, 60, what, well, 12%? Well, you can figure it out. <laughs> and you keep doing that every year. Just keep doing that every year. And it compounds. And it grows. That's better thinking to feel like I just need another job. And I don't, I just spend what I see and I want it, I get it. At one time, um, our young people was buying these uh, four or $5,000 rims and putting it on a $3,000 car. <laughs> because they like the way they look riding down the street. Can you imagine if they had took that three or four thousand and bought a share of Apple, Apple shares or Microsoft? You can imagine the amount of money they would have. And I'm so thankful. Uh, because a, a, a lot of us bought into uh, Bitcoin. You remember when Bitcoin was lower? A lot of us, bit, and then it went way down. And then I told my wife, I said, you know what? I think I'm going to take me a loss. Guess what? <laughs> Record high. <laughs> I said, I'm, I'm glad for my people. <laughs> I said it was worth it. Because a lot of us have bought it. Now, I'm, th I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to buy it. Then I got to thinking, man, I don't want to be left out. 
And then I buy it, and then some says, just go ahead and take a loss. Write it off your taxes. Ah. But I'm okay, though. I didn't have that much. It was just a little bit. But, <laughs> but it's just an example of why uh, if you're not patient, be, because anytime you invest, you got to be patient. And, and when things get, um, was it Warren Buffett? Warren Buffett gave the best advice. When everybody is selling, is the time to buy. When everybody is selling, it's time to buy. When everybody buying, it's time. <laughs> You know, we buy low and sell high. And, and so every time you go through these dips, that's the time to buy. But your mind's saying, man, it's going to go lower and lower. It always pulls out. Commitment number seven, to be a servant. Whether you're a man or a woman, God uh, expects us to be servants. Jesus was a servant. And he expects us to be servants of each other. Your neighbor, or husband, wife, work together, join heirs of the grace of life. Working together for a common goal. And, and that's why the Bible talks about being unequally yoked. It, when the Bible was talking about in the Old Testament, you don't hook an ox up with a, 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 a donkey because one's stronger than the other. And he's going to be pulling one way and the other one is not going to be pulling so hard. And, and so when you have a goal in life and your partner is not pulling in that direction, it's going to make it hard. You may not ever uh, achieve your goal if you're pulling in a different direction. So each one of us fulfill different roles. It's the man that takes the responsibility of a leader in a marriage. And I always say that as a pastor, there's areas I won't get into unless I'm invited into a marriage or, or something. I don't go in there. So that's your marriage. That's your wife. And then a, a, a lot of the leaders uh, say the same thing. Well, the men, this is our role. The women, they, that, that's role. When you uh, study the Bible, the Bible says, according to the law, the law ain't said nothing about me being a head over all, every woman. What did it say? My own wife. Even in the church, when there was a separation, there was a period of time where the men sit on one side, women sit on the other side, the, the uh individual is teaching or preaching and then the wife want to know what he said who does she ask her husband what did he mean what that mean and so that bible said wait until you get home and ask him and so if she asks him that means he got to have an answer right that means he got to know more than she know right otherwise why is she asking him Forgive and forget the trespasses of our mates. You know you did that last month. You always doing that. Is that true? <laughs> you always doing that. You doing that? You did that last month.
to forgive and forget. Ta uh, tackle the problem and not the individual. If, if there's a problem in a marriage, don't forget to focus on the problem. Because two people attack, if you attack that problem together, you'll solve it. If you attack each other, that problem is not going to be solved. You might create more problems. And so whatever irritates me, I remember a individual I worked with, and he came to um, he came to work, and he was upset. He was mad. And um, I was asking him, you know, what happened? You know what happened? He got home, and his wife hadn't cooked. <laughs> I said, man, you wasting your time. I said, if you hungry, stop and get something to eat. If you that hungry, stop and get you. He liked ribs. I said, you know that place you like them ribs? Stop and get you some ribs. I said, you be in such a good mood when you get home. You don't have to fight. You don't have to fuss. And she loved to say, I said, give her the receipt when you get home. I <laughs> just said, here, honey, here's the receipt. But she bad because she didn't cook. And she worked too. Because I had went through the same thing. Because sometimes, most time food would be ready, sometimes it wouldn't. But if I was home, I know I better stop and get me something. And my wife liked to shop, I hate shopping. <laughs> but you know what? I bite the bullet sometimes. Don't I? <laughs> and I go, my son-in-law is good at it. I don't understand it yet. I'm going to have to talk to him. <laughs> but he just goes in them store. I'm thinking, oh, if I can ever get out of here. I, don't, <laughs> I didn't come here for anything. <laughs> oh, just look. And she'll look, hey, won't this look good on so-and-so? I'm not shopping for so-and-so. But I learned to give, you had to give and take. Because sometimes she's going to do things that, because sometimes uh, she don't like uh, Westerns. I like Westerns. And sometimes she said, oh, you can, kind of you can turn on the Westerns if you like. And, and so I appreciate that. I appreciate every once in a while she'll look at Westerns with me. And then I try sometimes to look at housing stuff with her. <laughs> <laughs> but I have to mess with her because she'll see things around the house like if a picture need painting or part of the wall need placing. I said, you all know how to do that. You don't watch all those shows that show you how to do that. Now, how come I have to still do that? <laughs> You ought to be able to do electricity, lay floors, everything. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. And, and so as you grow, and that's why I say when I was a child, I speak as a child and I understood as a child. When we got married, I didn't want to do nothing I didn't want to do. <laughs> now, I want to stay single <laughs> in my mind. That's what I'm talking about. I was married, but I wanted to stay single in my mind do everything I want to do. I want her to think like me, think about things just like I do. And I've found out that a lot of uh, the things, the way she think is better. The way she think about things, a lot of it is better than the way I think about things. And so we are not called to feel, you know, that love, they talk about in a lot of the records about love. Because feeling love is not to command love. You know you can be commanded to love.
And so we are to love our spouse. You know, there are some, um, there are some people that still don't pick their own spouse. There are still cultures where the family picks their spouse. And they stay married better than we do. <laughs> and they'll tell you, hey, when I married them, I didn't love them. Yeah, didn't even know them. But we court them for so long and learn stuff about them and, and still say, oh, I fell out of love. But well, we have to be committed. And, and so many times, God plan counters our plan. We are supposed to put those principles in practice. And I'm sure many of us can look back over our own marriages and see how God has helped us to grow up. And don't expect for people to stay the same. People don't stay. You got to give people room to grow. Well, you changed. Well, yeah. <laughs> How many times have you heard that? You know, even at work, if you get a promotion, oh, you think you something now, you done change. Yeah, you're supposed to change. Can you imagine how you would be if you didn't change? It would be terrible if, if the growth, just say my wife grew, grew and I didn't. How would you like to live with me when I was in my 20s? <laughs> Could you handle that? <laughs> when I was a child, I spake as a child. <laughs> and I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. We good now. I enjoy marriage. I've always enjoyed marriage, but now it's not as much work. <laughs> it's not as much work as it used to be. Amen. <laughs> well, God bless you. Hope you got something out of the lesson tonight. Uh, marriage. I thought about marriage since we've been married for 47 years. That's 